Senior mentioned last week how your responses are getting much better. I think it's a sign of your growing faith. 7.30 sometimes, I wonder if you're there. But thank you for your, your presence. Listen, I just had a soft, warm moment I want to share with you. A lot of stuff, as you know, is extemporaneous. Deacon Ralph, who's 89, 40 years of service as a deacon, is going to, slow, is going to shortly retire. And as he gets up, and as you saw him walk over here, uh, Sean will be a deacon in less than two months. I'm thinking, wow, the changing of the guard. 40 years of loyal, faithful service. And I always bring this to your attention because God is not done with you yet. There's more work to do. Now, there's a lot going on here. There's, uh, there's always a lot going on. I can't help it with, with the things in my head. But there's actually a lot going on. I had a funeral this, uh, this morning. I can validate a marriage. Someone was married 50 years outside the church who went ahead and got it blessed in the church. The powerful experience. Uh, the Pops are here, the Chief of the Knights of Columbus, the Grand Knight, and his wife Melinda. They're going to renew their 25th wedding anniversary, which is awesome. Uh, Scott, I can't say enough about who does so much with the Knights for our parish. Melinda, who works at the Parish Center, who I know we can't be paying her enough money. Uh, they're going to renew their vows today with their family and all those who are present. Also, Sean, he just got here. Just got here. He's taking off. Going to be with his family for a couple weeks and head back to Rome for that major education he gets over there, uh, which I did not receive. No, Father Coder doesn't go to Rome. I get to go to Maryland. Thank you very much. No, just, anyway, so Sean was joking. He says, look, Father, you got too much going on. He says, do me a favor. He goes, just make it a short homily. I can tell you in advance, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I actually thought, you know, I actually thought about this because let's be honest, Monsignor Hermes is the mentor Bishop sends Sean here to, to watch Monsignor Hermes and what to do, Father Simon and I, on what not to do. <laughs> but I was thinking, because he, he gets it from both sides, like, ah, I see, ah, oh, that, not do that. <laughs> but I thought, I'm being real sincere, I thought, you know what I'd love to do? I'd love to get up at this pulpit in front of Sean and give a, sh a brief, concise, insightful homily, really model for him what, what a good priest homily would be. Then I realized, with that expectation, I'm going to disappoint myself. <laughs> so, we're back to the homily. Um, again, congratulations. We'll talk more about that. We've got to move fast. Um, uh, not, did he all start a sentence with um? Where's the first page? I got, I got three points, though. Transubstantiation, divinization, and evangelization. I'll say them again. Today you heard about the Eucharist, fourth week in a row. Transubstantiation. You all believe that, well, eh, I, I just talked to a guy before Mass. Not everyone believes this. At Mass this, it's okay. Some are still on the fence. Not everyone at Mass this morning, I know at least one person. I know for, well, let's, again, there's psychology and there's other answers. But if you believe what Jesus said in the Gospel you just heard is true, that's why you're here. You're here because of transubstantiation. Jesus, 17 hours before he died, took a piece of bread and gave his last will and testament. Now, if something happens to me between now and uh, when I get to a lawyer, uh, this, is, this is being recorded, I, don't, I have brothers, I love my brothers, I want my money to go to the church. I don't want them to touch a dime of it. That's my will. If I, if I, if I have a lawyer and it gets notarized, you know what's gonna happen. A judge will see to it that my last will and testament is carried out and carried forth. Christ told us what he wanted us to do. He said, look, I gotta go. It was great, we had a nice time. But I entered the Passover supper, I'm gonna establish something perpetual. You're not gonna kill me again. Do this in remembrance, but it's gonna be real. It's gonna be me. And I want you to believe this. And you do, that's why you're Catholics. That's why we're Catholic Christians. And I say this to you uh, at many different levels. One level is this. When people say, I was at Willow Creek last week for this leadership conference. It's been on my mind a lot. Uh, it was an awesome global leadership conference with some heavy hitting speakers. It wasn't about religion. It was about global management, leadership training, stuff like that. And just for your information, I wore my uniform and they gave me a, 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 a sign, a tag, you know, your name. So I wrote in the biggest writing, I, I did the measuring, Father Jerome, Catholic priest, and put a cross. And walked around like this. 
Because as you know, most of the people there were Catholics. For whatever reason or not, I'm not going to solve this problem in a short homily. They were Catholics, disaffected, dissatisfied. They went somewhere else. They don't believe this. They believe, they're Christians. Well, I'm not, here to, I'm not here to argue that. I'm not arguing about Christianity. They're Christians. Uh, the biggest myth they tell is that we earn salvation. No, we do not. The hope this is a newsflash. Catholic Christians do not earn salvation. We participate in it. We cooperate with it. But I heard that ex expressed a lot, and I wanted my concerns to be pushed up the ladder to management, that they stop telling the flock that this is what we teach, because we simply do not teach this. But this is a teaching that is central to my Christian understanding, to my Catholic love of God and receiving of revelation from him, from an unbroken line of succession, from the mouth of Jesus himself, through the blood of the martyrs, after the fall of Rome and the conversion of the barbarians, with, with those priests and deacons and bishops who buried people after the Black Plague, after the Crusades, picking up after that, and up to this moment. Here's my point. When people leave here, often, not all of them, some, some. Hey, Father, you know people in your own family. Common argument. Hey, Father, you guys got to get with the times. You're too old-fashioned. This stuff needs to be changed. You need to modernize yourself. Hey, I got news for you. Jesus is coming in a short amount of time. Tell him he's old news. It's brand new. Someone gave me that insight. I think it's an awesome one. I just got it. Someone gave it to me. I'm taking it. I stay, you know I steal all my material. He's brand new. He's going to come on the altar eternally. What's he going to tell us? He's going to tell us the truth from the Father. The fullness of truth. And it's going to be inside of us. Because of transubstantiation. 17 hours before he died, he gave us his last will and testament. I don't know the exact math. He got up Sunday around 6 a.m., I'm figuring. Right? Crack of dawn. I don't know. Jerusalem, that time of year. Probably, what, April? 5.45. On the, when it got dark on the road to Emmaus in Luke 24, he broke the bread again. Pay attention. They didn't find him when he explained the scriptures. They admitted their hearts were burning. They had an emotional response. But they intellectually, in Luke 24, did not make the connection. When, they make, when did they make the connection? Someone tell me. When he, thank you, when he broke the bread, when transubstantiation happened, then their eyes were opened by the Holy Spirit and they saw him. And he disappeared. The trademark of Jesus Christ. Coca-Cola is the real thing. Christianity, Acts 2.4.2, Acts 2.4.6, the book of Revelation, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, chapter 6. It's the breaking of the bread. It's mass. It's holy communion. It's what you just said. What the nice Christians over in South Barrington, and not just them, God bless them. They're definitely Christians. They care. They love. These are good people. And you better like them and respect them because they're coming to town. <laughs> and you know that. Now, a little side note. I want them to grow, be healthy, and get really big. Then I want to get a few helpers and stuff at, uh, envelopes on their car windshields. <laughs> yeah. And tell them, come on back to the, get the real food here, okay? This isn't a happy meal. Oh, small side note. There was a political thing yesterday at the Rib House. That I guess they brought back happy hour. I didn't know it was missing. <laughs> the state of Illinois brought back the happy hour. It was missing. So I showed up, and I, I showed up. Just casual clothes. They invited me to show up. I showed up. You're pro-life. I'll show up to your function. And I showed up, and uh, I said to somebody, the happy hour is gone? And he says, yeah, it's gone. They brought it back. I says, the Catholics got their own happy hour. <laughs> It's called mass, and it's a lot more than spirits in a bottle. It, it, thank you, someone got it. It's the Holy Spirit that enters us. Okay, so he breaks the bread. I'm, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. You're working with me, thank you. So he breaks the bread, he disappears. Where does he go? Where does he go? Heaven, he goes to heaven, of course. He goes. Where else does he go? Someone knows the answer. Where does he go? In them, yes, the, there were disciples, there were apostles, the disciples on the road to Emmaus. He went in them. What word is that? Divinization. It's a big word. You don't know what it means, generally speaking. It's from the East. It means when you receive communion, you become like God. I don't know how you feel after you work out. I and mean, trust me, some of you got to be well, I'm going to work out a little more. Okay, I'm just saying. I feel great. 
We got a guy in the back, one of the ushers. One guy tries to run. It's, it's, it's a kind of embarrassing. But the other guy swims like two miles. Two miles. I wonder what he feels like when he gets out of the pool. I do a half a mile. I feel like, I feel great. When I receive, receive communion, we get divinized. We get God's inner life. We can say what St. Paul says. It is not just I who live, but it is Christ who lives on me. When you receive Holy Communion, you put on Christ. Think about this. What a gift. At the wedding today, we were discussing economics and politics and everything else, and, and Karen's son said, Father, my greatest treasure is my wife. I'm like, that's awesome. And, and, and Scott, he already told me. Melinda, same thing for him. Um, yeah, exactly. But our faith, think about this. Our faith, which enables us to participate in Christ's last will and testament, to be his good disciples, to have him in us, that's awesome. So back to my people in South Barrington and all those others who are Catholic non-Christians. Here's my metaphor, the good ones. And remember, they're pro-life. We, we, again, just back to the same sex people. We all love, we love everybody. We're just fortunate traditional marriage. We believe it comes from God. We love everybody. Don't ever feel insulted or biased. Look, I can't make this stuff up. I got it from God. He gave it to us in the, in the Gospels. Having said that, um, their page is a metaphor. They're patriots. You know good Americans once in a while who are just a little crooked. They're patriots, but they don't like to honor the Thanksgiving memorial. <laughs> That's my analogy. They're good Christians, but for whatever reason, They've been, led away, they've been led astray from this most holy banquet. And, most importantly, the gift of divinization. Now, point three. It's not enough just to be Christ, which I need you to do. Heart to heart. Someone just said this to me, and I'm not spilling any beans. Heart to heart. Quorum ad quorum. If I have any success, Sean, when you become a priest, when you become a deacon, if you have any success in preaching to people and helping convert or change their lives or informing them on serious matters, it's going to come right out of your heart. Cordum at cordum in Latin. Heart to heart. When you receive communion, get down to business. Jesus, you know what I'm struggling with. You know what's on my mind. You know what's happening in my marriage. You know what's happening at my job. You know the addictions I suffer from. You know the thoughts that burden me. You know the woundedness from, this is you, I have no woundedness from my mom and dad as far as I know. But the woundedness from my mom, my dad, state's attorneys on me. I don't know what your problems are, but talk to the Lord. Heart to heart, I'm serious, tune it up. Let's talk about a two minute warning. They sure ring the bells at communion time the whole time. I'm exaggerating, of course. But get into that moment. Divinization, but it's not enough. You gotta leave here. Christ, bread becomes Christ. You receive Holy Communion, you become like Christ. Now go be Christ. Somebody agreed with me, and he's a very well informed person in this parish, a very well informed person, that when you go to Willow Creek, there is at times a sense these people are on fire. They talk about salvation all the time. When's the last time you told someone about or invited someone to church? When's the last time you asked somebody, hey, do you believe in Christ? Are you saved? And I, you know our answer. I am saved. By the grace of God, I will be saved. I'm working out in fear, as St. Paul said, in trepidation, my salvation. I'm not once saved, always saved. But you ever have these conversations? This is on record, and Deborah's here. We were talking, she wasn't here today, at my coffee club. I'm thinning the herd a little bit. I'm thinning the herd. Too serious for some. They don't want to talk about Jesus. They want to talk about, what's his name? Uh, Donald, Donald, I was going to say Donald Duck, sorry. Donald Trump. <laughs> That's what they want to talk about. They say, let's talk about politics, Father. I'm like, all right, all right. What do you want to talk about? Hey, if, if, sorry, I apologize for this. This has no place in a homily. But if the gentleman I just mentioned doesn't make it as, as, our, as the Republican nominee, he can teach fifth graders how to bully people. That's supposed to be funny. Anyway, you didn't get it. So the point is, we've got to leave here and be... First of all, I got a sense of humor. <laughs> right? Number two, we got to be Christ in marriage. I was with a couple Sunday in Park Ridge. They picked up and moved their whole family from, from uh, Barrington Hills to Park Ridge just for the schools. They want to send their kids to Opus Day schools, grammar school. They picked up, picked up their whole family. That's how important Catholic education and silly values in their children is. And during the middle of our dinner, he said to his, he, he did something, and he's, he's kind of, he thinks he's an important guy, but he had to do something on his cell phone, 
and his wife was telling a story and she said to him, Jason, Jason, I need you to check in with me. I knew they had been to counseling. I didn't know they'd been to counseling, but when she said language like that, you get that kind of language from a counselor. More people can use a counselor. I'm serious. One of the great talks I heard at Willow Creek, and it certainly applies to Father Simon, some people just don't take feedback well. <laughs> They don't. Hey, I'm guilty too. When Monsignor's talking to me about something I did wrong, I'm usually going off somewhere else. So I'm like, okay, Monsignor, all right. You know what, I, I bet he's tired of me saying, I won't do it again. <laughs> you said that last week. Now you're back. Anyway, my point, we gotta be Christ. More alert, more conscious. You know what they said about John Paul II? And I, wish to, and I used this line in a counseling session recently today. It's not a line, it's just what I, it's what I mean. John Paul II had the kind of uh, presence. When you were in a room with him, and even if there were a thousand people, he made you feel like you were the only person in that room. We gotta be present to other people. Hey, I know I gotta, I gotta follow my own medicine here. We gotta be better listeners. We do. People want someone to listen to. Look at the story he told last week. Remember, I don't know if you read his mass. He told a story up in the Tower of London, and some crusty old guy was a chain smoker. He had this really heavy heart, and when he got done, his friends listening to this man, they were all in tears. It was a cathartic, emotional moment. So that, that's, that's it. I want, there's two more things, and I'm walking away from this. You guys, you guys got off easy today. So, last thing I'll tell you. Be present. Be, get into ministry. What are you people, what are you still doing? What are we doing? What's with the anonymous Catholic thing? That's from the 50s. It's gone. 50s are gone. Go back to the... Hey, I was there. You want to go? Go to Cuba. They're in the 50s. Go to Cuba. I drove in a 53 Plymouth for eight hours. We hydroplaned nine times. There was no rain. <laughs> Just the, no treads in the tire. Anyway, great background. When I saw the, rain, the flag raised, that I'm not here to get political. I'm just telling you what happened, okay? They let me in and they let me back in. <laughs> Conclusion. I don't know why you're not anonymous Catholics. What's up with that? I go to Mass, check the box. I put money in the basket, Father, check the box. I'm, I heard your confessions. You know, I know what you're saying, confession. I'm generally a nice person. Check the box. I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> check the box. Although I'm talking awful about the lady next door. Oh my goodness. We gotta stop checking box Catholics. We gotta be evangelical Catholics. So, believe Christ, become like Christ, and then go outside and be Christ.